In this tutorial, we'll consider a 2D force problem involving an object on a ramp or inclined plane. Our example, a 100 kilogram box is released on a 30 degree ramp. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the ramp is 0.30. What is the acceleration of the box as it slides down the ramp? First step, a good free body diagram of course. We have FG, our normal force FN, up but perpendicular to the ramp surface. Then we have the friction force opposing the downward slide. Also, we know that we're going to have acceleration and it'll be down along the surface of the ramp. Now we'd never want to confuse things on a free body diagram by making our acceleration look like a force, so let's just show the direction of acceleration as a dotted line to remind ourselves. Next, F net equals MA, where F net is the sum of our forces on the left, and in this case there is acceleration, so the right hand side remains MA. If we wanted to attack this problem using the vector trig method, we'd move to a vector diagram, adding all our forces. Let's take a look. We'd have FG pointing straight down, as gravity always does, plus tail to head, FN, at an angle to stay perpendicular to the surface, plus FF, our friction force, parallel to the surface of the ramp, meaning perpendicular here, and that's all our forces. Now, F net is the resultant, starting from the very beginning and ending at the last force, and it's also parallel to the surface, as it'll be in the direction of acceleration, and we have a triangle. Certainly, we could do some geometry to establish angles and then some fancy trig and arrive at an answer this way, without too much trouble. Given that, I find that most people would be more comfortable solving this problem using the component method. So let's switch and dig into that. If we're going to solve this using components, then we're going to have to establish our axes, X and Y. In our previous problems, we used horizontal and vertical axes mostly as this was most convenient. Really, the choice of axes is totally up to you, but if you're strategic, you can minimize the number of components that you have to calculate, making things easier. For instance, if we went for horizontal and vertical axes here, let's consider which forces we'd have to break into components. Fn? Yep, it's at an angle, so we'd have to break that into Fnx and Fny, and let's see, FF, our friction force, it's at an angle as well, so we'd have to break that into FFX and FFY. FG, well yeah, we have one force that we wouldn't have to break down, as it's always down towards the center of the Earth. But then, we notice that when we solve it all, our resultant is going to be at an angle too. See the direction of acceleration? That's the direction of F net. So we'll end up with a F net X and an F net Y, and we'd have to combine those at the end to get our F net along the ramp. So this starts to look pretty messy, and we wonder how we can make this simpler. Well, if we adjusted the axes to be parallel and perpendicular to the ramp, let's consider that option. Well, Fn, that would be along the Y axis, so that's great, no components friction force, and that would be along the x-axis. Nice, again, no components. Fg, well, Fg, again, it doesn't change. It's always towards the center of the Earth, so it will need components. Fg, x, and Fg, y. And our resultant, F net, in the same direction as acceleration, would be along the x-axis. So no messing around with components at the end. This option looks much better, in fact. Let's align our axes like this as we work forward. Only the FG needs to be broken into components, FGX and FGY. I find that some students see the hardest part of the ramp problem is breaking down FG into components. So let's consider that all components add up to their resulting or real vector. So FGY plus head to tail FGX will always go to the resultant Fg from the start of the Fy to the end of the Fx. 
considering the y direction. F net y equals may. The forces in our y direction on the left include Fn, our normal force going up, positive, and Fgy, going down, negative. And on the right, we know that the acceleration in the y direction is zero, as we're not jumping off the ramp. So, we end up with Fn equals mg cos 30. Let's switch to the x direction. Again, F net x equals max. The forces in the x direction include the force of friction going up the ramp, positive, and Fgx going down the ramp, negative, and on the right, we are expecting an acceleration in the x direction, so we'll leave the max in place. So, mu Fn minus Fg sine 30 equals max. Some people would be tempted to replace Fn at this point with mg, but that would be wrong on a ramp problem, as proven in our y direction. Fn equals mg cos 30. So let's substitute that in. And rearranging for Ax, we see that the masses actually cancel out. True, that the bigger the mass, the greater the gravitational force pulling it down the ramp, but also, the bigger the mass, the greater the force of friction, and they balance each other out. The acceleration of the box would simply be dependent on the angle of the ramp and the coefficient of friction. At 30 degrees, and with mu being 0 0.30, the acceleration turns out to be negative 2.4 meters per second squared. Why the negative? Well, if we look back at our axes, we considered up the ramp to be positive, and the box will be accelerating down the ramp, so a negative acceleration is exactly what we should expect. In this tutorial, we considered a box on a ramp, or inclined plane. We considered the start of a vector trig solution, which is good, but then moved to the component solution, which is probably more common. In a component solution, we needed to establish a good set of axes. In this case, we realized that using some strategy in establishing our axes could save us some work. Choosing axes where the x-axis was along the ramp surface and the y-axis was perpendicular to the ramp seemed like the best bet for this situation. Using fnet equals ma, we built a nice equation in the y-direction, and again, using fnet equals ma, we also built an equation in the x direction. Combining our equations leads to our final answer, the acceleration of the box down the ramp.